Thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. Are you a gamer? Well, Opera GX is a free trusted web browser tailored for gamers that has a ton of neat features built into it. For anyone that's playing games on their PC, they have something called GX Control that allows you to have complete control over the amount of bandwidth, CPU, and RAM that you want your browser to have. That means that you can instead dedicate more data towards playing Azure Lane on Bluestacks and maybe increase your performance over there. Compared to Google Chrome, I did a little test and Opera GX significantly cut down on RAM usage. In addition, they also have built-in Twitch and Discord integrations so that you can do things such as joining my Discord server, Chainless Plug, Psst, we got a Sandy Colt, it's pretty lit, come join, discord.gg slash ander. Anyway, another feature of Opera GX is their GX Corner, where you can find the latest news for new game updates as well as new releases. They even have a really handy calendar up here so that you can go and keep track of your new updates for your favorite games. And if you love customization, Opera GX has plenty of that. You can set different themes, new wallpapers, as well as customize their other features over here to your liking. On top of that, Opera GX apparently also has a Razer Chroma Sync, where you can sync the backlight color of your browser to any of your Razer devices. Pretty neat. You can download Opera GX absolutely free using the link found in either the description or the pinned comment below, and if you have any questions, feel free to comment with the hashtag OperaGX so that their development team as well as myself can find your questions. With that being said, let's get into the video! What's up guys, it's Ander or FBI Open Up on the Lexington server back again with a gear guide video, this time for Odin. Surprisingly, even though Cheshire and Drake got much more hype than her, Odin can definitely stand on her own and is a very powerful battlecruiser. With that being said, let's get into the gear guide! For some farming fleet recommendations, Odin is part of the third generation of priority ships, and you can access her by clicking on the lab tab, then to shipyard, and she will be right here in the PR3 section. In order to go and farm for her, since she is a priority ship, you will need some Ironblood backline ships. This will include any Ironblood battleships, battlecruisers, and aircraft carriers, who I will go and quickly list right here. And before any of you guys ask, yes, you can use FDG to farm for Odin. Is it oil efficient? Not really. Do people care about being oil efficient? Maybe. Anyways, there really isn't too much variety in the backline Ironblood ships that you can use, so I'll just quickly name everybody you can use. You've got FDG, Odin, Bismarck, Tirpitz, Zeppi, Peter Strasser, Groft Zeppelin, Scharnhorst, Gneisenau, and Wesser. And if you guys wanted to know who I use for Odin's PR grind, as you can go over here, you can see by their levels, I used mainly Bismarck and Tirpitz, and a little bit of FDG. For some Odin gear basics, Odin is an Ironblood battlecruiser with a couple of very useful gimmicks up her sleeve. For her first skill, being Mimir's Keen Eyes, she actually makes it so that she positions herself in front of the flagship, which allows her auxiliary guns to reach the enemy ships. This drastically increases her DPS and helps clear waves of enemies much faster. Along with this, Odin also takes 20% less damage and every 15 seconds she emits a sonar scan, which reveals enemy submarines for 10 seconds, reduces their accuracy by 25%, as well as decreasing the amount of damage that your vanguard takes by torpedoes for 15% for 10 seconds. For her second skill, Every 18 seconds, Odin simply gets a 75% chance to shoot an insanely cool thunderbolt straight down the middle of your screen. It deals AP damage, ignores enemy shields, pierces through all enemies, and changes the spread angle of Odin's torpedoes. Due to how Odin does not require flagship position in order to be effective, she is an insanely versatile ship that can fit into any fleet. If you are in need of a fantastic backline ship, I would highly recommend trying to go and farm for her. For Odin's general gear loadout, first of all, let's talk about her main gun. Since Odin's barrage is time-based and not based off of whenever she fires a salvo, you can put on a slower firing and higher damage gun on her. For high explosive options, you can really not go wrong with the triple 406mm right here. It's got high damage, great accuracy, and a solid fire rate. And alternatively, if you do have the gold prototype triple 381mm, it is an option. Only at plus 13 is when it slightly beats out the triple 406 mm at plus 11. So overall, for overall cost and overall effectiveness, you should just use the triple 406 mm But the triple 381 is also an option. For AP options, if you're at world 13 or if you're fighting some bosses in Operation Siren, 
The prototype 44406mm right here is pretty solid for that. Alternatively, you could also use the prototype 44410mm, although the prototype 44406mm wins out on a little bit of stats, as you can see right here. It has a slightly faster fire rate, as well as having slightly better armor modifiers against medium and heavy armor, a faster shell velocity, and a slightly smaller spread range. Next up, for Odin's torpedo mount, what you put for her torpedo mount really won't make a difference too much. You'll be fine with putting whatever highest rarity torpedo mount you have sitting around. I would personally recommend putting on a magnet torpedo on Odin. Either the quintuple or quadruple is fine. That's because Odin shoots all of her torpedoes in a straight line, and the magnet torpedoes will be able to better track the enemies and hit them more often. Now for anti-air guns, battleships and battlecruisers would want guns that grant them additional accuracy. The two anti-air guns in the game that do that would be this Bofors Hazemeyer right here, that grants a nice 5 accuracy, and the better version, which is going to be the Bofors Stag right here, that grants 10 accuracy. If you don't have those two options, then you really don't need to worry too much. You can use really just the highest rarity anti-air gun that you have, and that will be working fine for her. For auxiliary gears, Odin would really just be good with any auxiliary gears that grant extra firepower or accuracy. Some good picks would be the classic Cordata White Shell, which gives a really nice 55 extra firepower and 15 additional accuracy, as well as increasing main gun critical damage by 25%. Along with this, you can also use the Cordata Black Shell that grants 70 firepower and it increases main gun crit rate by 8%. Some other good options include the High Standard Fire Control Radar right here, which gives some really nice firepower and a large amount of accuracy, as well as decreasing the loading time of the first main gun volley by 15%. Along with this, some other options are Nelson's Pendant of Victory, if I could find it. So right here, you can go and get this from the Memento tab, it's pretty good provides some nice firepower and accuracy, as well as making the ship that has it equipped take 24% of the damage taken by the frontmost vanguard for the first 6 seconds in battle. And finally, for some easier to get options, you can of course use the SG radar all the way up here, which grants some nice extra accuracy, as well as some purple alternatives, including the purple SG radar, the purple fire control radar, as well as the purple white shell. Now for the battle showcase, we'll just be doing a run of D3 for the current Korovod of Dawn's Rhyme event, so I'll see you guys there. So here's the first battle against a Siren. Odin will also be really good against Sirens because since she is a priority ship, she does do that extra Siren killer skill that grants her a nice like 15% additional damage against Sirens. So there's her Mimir's Keen Eyes proc, she goes and scans for all those submarines, and that's her Thunderbolt proc, and... That's it. That was nice. So there you go. That's battle number one. So here's another battle, which will probably end up the same way. What happens is that the reason why I'm using the high standard fire control radar is that it actually makes it so that her salvo goes off almost at the exact same time that her barrage goes off. So there's her scan once more. And then here's her thunderbolt barrage, and that's her salvo right there. And the siren's already dead. Well, that's unfortunate. Anyway, that's battle number two. Here we go again, and I almost forgot to mention, when she does fire her salvo, as you can see, she is shooting her auxiliary gun towards the enemy because she is in that weird position in front of the flagship. So as you can see, there's her little AP gun shots. There's her barrage proc, and as you can see, she is in front of here, you meta. And that is battle number three. Now finally getting into a battle that's not a siren, so we'll probably hopefully see the barrage fully in action. So this is a level 2 mob fleet node. Got the siren, the scan right there, and as you can see it revealed all those submarines that were hiding. There's the thunderbolt. And that was nice. Odin is especially good on event maps since there are a bunch of submarines on this for some reason. That's nice. So here we are with another battle. This time it is a level 3 mob, mob fleet node. So it should theoretically be the strongest enemy that we face. So let's see how they stand. So the submarines get revealed from Odin's sonar scan. 
There's Odin's barrage right there, shooting that thunderbolt right down the middle. And we've got Hiryu proccing her airstrike now. And that should clean everything up. And there is battle number 5. And here's battle number 6. They ran out of ammo, but that really shouldn't be stopping them because they are really overleveled. So they should be able to go and steamroll right through this as normal. Even though they deal 50% less damage right now. So once again, that's Odin's Barrage, that's Odin's Salvo. The one problem about her Barrage is that it really only hits the exact center of the screen, so as you can see, those two ships on these sides actually did not get hit by her Barrage. But other than that, it's pretty solid. And to go and end things off, here's a nice boss fleet battle with Sovetskaya Rosia in the back, along with Cheshire, Ashkent, and Shapayev in the vanguard. Once I get my Sovetskaya Rosia to level 120, right now she's at level 119, I will be working on Sovetskaya Belarusia, and you can expect a video on her pretty soon because she is a very good ship. Right now I think I just need to get her blue skill up to level 10 right now, and then we'll be done. Speaking of getting things done, looks like the boss is halfway dead. Another one of Sovetskaya's Savos might be able to close things out. That is if she hits them. And the battle's coming to, to an end. And there you go. So, with that battle showcase finished, that will conclude my gear guide for Odin. As always, if you found this information helpful, consider dropping a like and subscribing. Don't forget to press the notification bell for my future uploads as well. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions that need to be answered, and I'll try my best to reply. If you're interested, you can always join my Discord server in the description below if you need any advice or just want a place to relax. That'll be all for this video, so I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!